Hi, uh, welcome to my uh, fake seminar, how you want to build an arcade machine. First of all, who I have in my audience, question is, who has an arcade machine at home? Show your hands. One, two, three. Who has ever tried to make one? One, two in the back. Who wants one? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, for the people on the stream, basically everybody went, yay. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, it's, it looks simple, and it is, and it isn't. So you have to dumb it down. You have to, you have to if you want to make an arcade cabinet, um, uh, either it's um, dedicated JAMA or it's with a PC. I will come back to, those to, to that terminology later. Is you have to um, take it down in the easy steps. You have your input. Those are the buttons. You have your up, down, left, right your uh, fire button, jump button, magic button, block button, whatever button. The CPU is in the middle, that, that's your game, which makes things happen. And you have your output, which is the monitor and the speakers. And then just for fun of it, you have blinking lights most, most of the time. Now, <clears throat> the problem is how does all of this stuff work together? Well, you have magic for that. We have, we have orange magic and we have the green magic. Our oh, input are, you say, well, okay, it's buttons and joysticks, and how do they work? Well, buttons and joysticks, they aren't really that important because you can dumb it down even more to their lower component level, which is the microswitch. Microswitches have three connectors, the COM, the common, not normally closed and normally open. The COM is your ground, that, that's your ground loop. Everything electrically has a ground, and you, you, you just connect one to the other, and well, don't, you don't really have to care about that one. That's just one loop. But you have to make a good cable, um, but that's an easy test. Um, so you can just hook them all up together. Your com is always the bottom one. If you want to make it actually work with the bottom of a joystick, you have to connect the normally closed. The normally closed, me, the normally, <coughs> sorry, the um, normally open. Open means that there is no connection. It's when you close the micro switch, normally open will go to close and you will make the contact. Um, if you, <coughs> you have micro switches with just these two terminals, that's fine. You, you need two out of three, the third one is never used. Uh, a mistake that I often see f uh, also from uh, professional vendors who come to me with their, my arcade machine never works, is that they misconnect one of those cables. Now, output wise, you have three options. You have an original monitor. You can have a computer monitor, by which I mean a VGA screen. And you have a CRT TV. Well, pros and cons for everything here. Arcade monitors are basically TVs without a tuner. Um, they are, it's one, one channel. They have a fixed input. And the problem is that they, they have been in service for a lot, lot of time. It's, um, People come to me and ask me, okay, do you have arcade monitors in stock? I say, no. They ask me, why not? Well, do you have a TV which is 15 year old, has been put on for 13 years of that nonstop and still works? No, forget it. Um, and also, it's, so that's one, how to find a good one. It's hard to maintain because, um, um, I know some people here in the audience can probably read Japanese schematics. I cannot. Um, and you need to, well, they, uh, these um, schematics for the electronics are troublesome. Uh, of course, you can no longer find the parts. Uh, maybe you can, uh, you can fake a bit, but um, the easiest is actually to remove the electronics. Ele electronics, by the way, <coughs> is this part. It's called the chassis and you have the neck tube, which is a smaller PCB. All of this, by the way, is um, on random places covered by 10,000 volts of electricity, which will remain there when you switch it off for a couple of months. If, if, you, if you like muscle spasms, it's a good exercise. Um, did I cover most of it? No, I think I did. Um, oh yeah, and if you want it to connect to a PC, you need some extra hardware, which we will come to that. As I said, <clears throat> there is one company left in the world who still makes them and are uh, yeah, European environmentally laws compliant. Uh, they do ship here, uh, but uh, shipping charges will usually kill you if you don't order them by the container. 
So then you have your VGA monitor. Everybody has a spare 19 inch or 21 inch CRT available. The larger sizes which you want in your arcade cabinet, if you have a 25 inch or 27 inch, they are, they are hard to find and they are fucking heavy. Also, um, if you want to, to, to use this in an, in an original cabinet, you again need to have some uh, converters in place to which we will get back later. And your CRT TV, which as said, is basically an arcade monitor, uh, with, uh, but with a tuner. Same, same goes for uh, the lifetime. Now, um, TVs have less hours uh, running time than uh, arcade monitors. You, you watch TV a couple of hours in the evening, and that's it. Arcade monitors are usually on for 15 hours a day. Um, again, the, the uh, connection hardware comes into play, and also, well, if you, I'll quickly go back. You see the little, the, the, the holes here, which exist around the metal, there are uh, also um, bolts in arcade cabinets to connect, to, to connect them to. You screw it off, you take it out, you put a new one in, you screw it in place. A TV doesn't have that, so you have to take out, you have to take out the tube of the plastic and with some woodwork make a shelf, uh, or you can, um, I have seen um, um, metal bolts hot glued to the tube. <laughs> um, I am, I'm really surprised some people actually survived that. <laughs> now, I, it's, no, it's community like group thingy. Uh, quiz time, why can't you simply swap a TV for a VGA? Someone, come on. I know it's not question time yet, but um, um, okay. I hear frequency and I, I hear RGB. You're actually quite on the spot. The thing is, indeed, um, it's the horizontal refresh rate: uh, 15 kilohertz for a TV and an arcade monitor, 21 kilohertz for a VGA signal. Um, now, this probably will not make sense to most of you. I can understand, so here's, here's, the, here's, the math, here's the math behind it. It's the horizontal refresh rate is you have an electron beam that goes, you, you, you know your re refresh rate, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, etc. That's how much it goes up and down a second, but left and right is a lot more. If you have 300 lines RGB at 50 hertz, that's 15,000 times left and right that your electron beam goes over your screen. For a VGA, which has a higher resolution, has to do more lines, you end up with the overscan at around 31,000. And to say, Robin, well, that's mighty fast. <coughs> and that's why you cannot connect one to the other. Um, if you're lucky, it will show nothing. If you're, un if you're, if you're unlucky, you will see gray smoke and the code will escape. <laughs> <coughs> so, where are we now? We have covered the input, we have covered the output. We will not cover the blinking lights, that's, that's your own project. You can use nice RGB lights over there. But, well, uh, the magic, which is, if, if we go back, is the input magic, is how, how do we ha let the buttons talk to the main CPU board, the main PCB. So, <coughs> cable salad. You, you either use a JAMA cable or you use an, an iPad. Now, I have mentioned JAMA cable again. It is the Japan Amusement Machinery Manufacturers Association, which is the um, Japanese um, lobby of arcade manufacturers. They still exist. They have um, a JAMA show in Japan each year where they introduce their, their new uh, rack fluffy bunny games that Sega makes today. Um, <clears throat> but this uh, cable standard came into play around 85 because people always had to swap out uh, new games for old ones. Uh, we sold everything, and uh, this was getting, well, the, the, the people didn't want that. So it's actually, it's, it's all in one. The thing is, it's, it's an input and output cable at the same time, and a power. So you have your input over here is JAMA supports two joysticks with three buttons, two start buttons, uh, your uh, coin mechanism, a test switch and a service switch, which um, some, you don't see them connected, connected uh, that often, but if you make a cabinet, do connect them because some, uh, multi-game uh, cards actually require them if you want to get into the settings menu to set them to free play. Um, and power. 12 volt is for the sound, 5 volt is for the logic, minus 5 volt is for strange old games, and uh, ground is ground. If you, a uh, little repair tip, if you have a game where the sound doesn't work, check the 12 volt line because that usually dies on the power supply. 
Now, and the iPad, which is an iThing not made by Apple, <laughs> is um, it's basically a USB interface for the entire buttons. Um, it has, it's a bit more modern, uh, so you have more inputs. You have uh, eight buttons per player, so you can put your uh, Street Fighters and Mortal Kombat and MVSs and everything on there because we remember that Gemma has three, cable, has three buttons. Uh, one start, one coin, and you even have two additional connectors. So if you want really to go overkill, um, you can have 10 buttons per player. Um, Ninja? Uh, okay, uh, the, uh, the question is if it's standard or homebrew. Uh, no, this is, an, this is an off the shelf component. Okay. You, can, uh, you can buy it in my shop. <laughs> um, so, and it will um, output to um, um, PS2 and or USB. This is the basic two player version. You have the Epic D Long four, four player version. You also have a smaller board with connector terminals so you don't have to solder. Um, I, I often see people who come, they, they want the four-player version because they want the big cabinet, and they want four players with eight buttons each, and they end up with a three-meter monstrosity. <laughs> <coughs> and then they are surprised it doesn't work. Um, I have some nice pictures of us. <laughs> so that's the IPAC uh, other uh, Orange Magic uh, input device. So we covered this. Orange Magic we covered, uh, we, we know how to do that. Now, it's a uh, part two. It's a um, little bit, well, oversimplification uh, of uh, what works and what doesn't work. As we said, an arcade board will output 15 kilohertz, we remember the numbers, and will quite easily connect to a monitor or a TV. A PC talks VGA. Uh, that's, I, I hope for demo seniors that's clear. So that's no problem, that's no problem. That's the question where we need the magic to happen. So we have video converter boards. Uh, you have boards which will convert your CGA to VGA and your VGA to CGA. Um, the cost of this is about 55 to 60 euros, depends on the supplier. They take a five, five volt power which should be available everywhere in your cabinet because that's what your main logic runs on. Uh, it's a little bit of cabling, but you have multifunctional boards. They will take um, a component video. They will take SVHS. They will uh, output um, um, component composites. Um, some even output EGA 25 kilohertz if you have a crazy Sega cabinet. Um, they will. You have them in both ways, and you can basically convert any video to any video signal. It will decrease the quality. Don't forget, these, these are made by the cheapest Chinese suppliers you can get, so the components aren't that up to spec, but it will allow you to uh, do some conversion. Uh, nicer ones have a menu system, which by default comes in Chinese, menu for is language. <laughs> you can put it in English. Um, that will uh, have you um, stretch the, the, the display, adjust the brightness, and so it looks more pretty. So this is the converter board, and you have the JPEG, which is the cousin or the brother of the iPack. It's well, basically it's an it's an iPack with the JAMA connector. Um, so you you have over here you have your uh, um, JAMA plug, you have your uh, connection to the PC, you have your VGA input and you have your audio input. You connect, you take a little um, um, uh, mini jack cable, you cut it open and you um, connect the left and the right together. You stuff it in there where you put the ground into the other one. Uh, hook up your uh, um, USB or PCB and your VGA. Uh, it, will, it, it will take power from the, from the PC USB, by the way, not your, um, um, not, not the JAMA cable. So if you don't have an arcade power supply in there is actually no problem because you don't use it. Um, what this will not do is convert the video. It's a, it's a one, it's a, it's a pass through. There is a check. <clears throat> if you see that the, the jumpers here, it says uh, 31, 25 and 15 kilohertz. If you, um, without conversion, put a 31 kilohertz signal to this, it will actually double it, which means you will have two screens side by side and you can do your configuration and debugging. It's not intended for long-term usage and it will fry it. 
but you have uh, one hour to set it up and uh, uh, do your uh, conversion. Oh, yes, it's a hard, it's a cabinet development with a deadline. So <coughs> the JPEG, how do we get 15 kilohertz to that? Well, you have special VGA cards, um, which uh, will, uh, they are based on uh, NVIDIA AMD chips, but they have, um, well, software in it because Believe it or not, the VGA card or chip in this laptop, in your PC, can do 15 kilohertz. It's just that the registry settings don't allow it. So what you can do is, either with software, add those settings, and you will have 5 million crazy resolutions to choose from, suddenly, which your RAM deck will do. Or you can have the VGA card, which has, been, which has a, a firmware on it, which uh, allows you to select 31 and 15 kilohertz, you can actually do 15 kilohertz on VGA and 31 on the DVR, just, just for shits and giggles. And we also mentioned the TV. Uh, well, um, it's, uh, there is no straight cable, so the best thing to use here for output is the SCART cable. Um, SCART is basically the same signal, but on a different pinout. Uh, so you uh, connect your green, your red, and your blue, your sync signal, and your ground. Now SCART has many grounds, so you just tie them all together. You have um, some extra pins for input selection, and, um, well, basically it was there. One thing to watch out for is that um, SCART TVs ex expect 3 volts on those lines, or 3 volt signals, not 5 volt as is the TTL signal of an arcade board. This is, again, on cheap TVs where we talk about the gray smoke and the code escaping. So, um, some nice diagrammy time to uh, sum it all up and um, explain you how to actually connect everything together. Now, this is the, uh, an iPad and a VGA from uh, a PC, basically. So you have your joysticks, uh, which, you, which goes into your um, iPad. This connects to the PC, and the PC output, outputs to your speaker. This is an easy setup, and it's um, actually which, uh, which um, most um, normal people who w w like an arcade cabinet will use um, and are not um, uh, hardcore people who really want an arcade monitor and say, well, VGA is fine. Um, if you want to use MAME, by the way, it has uh, filter overlays, which will add fake raster lines, so it looks old. Going to a non-JAMA cabinet, so mm, meaning again the, with, with the iPad and a CRT screen, or an arcade monitor, or a TV. You start out off with your buttons, you go to your iPad as before, you go to your PC, and then you add the converters. Either you use your VGA card, which outputs 15 kilohertz, or you, you use your video converter in the middle, and that goes to your um, screen. Third one is you have a JAMA cabinet. So this is an original arcade cabinet. Uh, there is no, no PC in there. Um, it's one-to-one -one, uh, hookup. This is if you buy an old arcade cabinet. This is hopefully what you will find. So you have your buttons, which go into the JAMA cable which go to your game board, back into the cable, and out to your screen. And the, the nicest diagram is you have your joysticks into your cable, and now we will use emulation. So that's with a PC in the middle, which you have to convert and do every, mm, here's where you use both magics. So this is your input magic already. So from joysticks into the cable, into the uh, JPEG, in this case, which goes to your PC, which goes into the hardware or the software, back into the JPEG, back into the cable, and out to your screen. I could have just done this one slide for the entire presentation, how to build your arcade cabinet. I thought it was handy to open it up a bit more. Uh, this is also the last slide, so basically question time now. It's uh, quite a lot to stuff into one presentation and uh, try it out, but uh, I think Scoop is waiting with the microphone. Somebody, come on. 
Okay, uh, third row, and then here in the front. Uh, have you have you tried the building the, the the cabinet itself, the wood and stuff? How hard is that? Um, actually, it's not hard. The hard part is getting the wood. Uh, yes, you can get um, uh, free designs on the internet. The problem is finding someone with a CNC machine who doesn't charge 50 euros an hour to program it. There is a company in the UK which, uh, which will sell you the kits, but shipping to mainland Europe alone is 150 euro. Okay, uh, if you can put the microphone to the front, please. Uh, what is with the possibilities to use for the input uh, cheap uh, USB joysticks and solder yourself? instead of the iPad, or uh, for, for uh, um, output screen, uh, use a TV card, old stuff? Um, you can use a TV card. Uh, you can, if, if you have uh, a TV card with uh, a uh, composite video out, you can do that. That's just a matter of configuration in your, in your Windows machine or in your PC. If you want to use some, something else like Linux or Mac, that, that's also fine. Um, soldering the cheap, USB joysticks, yes, but they will break. The, uh, the uh, arcade uh, uh, components, they are made for uh, the cheapest micro switch you can find is certified for 10 million clicks. No, uh, uh, I mean uh, solder the micro switch and the uh, joystick on the, on the cheap uh, USB joystick. You just break off the okay. housing and, and solder on the uh, on the PCB. Yes, uh, I understand. Uh, it's it's an option, but I don't use it. Yes, uh, well, it's um, what you have also s what what also exists, and I haven't covered them. Here are the monstrosities that people don't use a JPEG, but they open up a keyboard and they solder each uh, terminal directly to one of the keys, and you have this thing with five million cables coming out of it going to the buttons and the joysticks. Now, uh, what I didn't mention is that on a normal USB keyboard, you are limited to five or six key presses at the same time, and then it will crap out. Um, imagine that you are playing a two-player game, uh, that um, if you go up and left, that's two connections. If you have one button pushed, that's a third one. Second player does it as well, that's your six connections. So if you're playing um, Street Fighter, um, uh, say it's Ken versus Ryu, one of the two guys will fail their Hadouken, basically because you're out of connections on the keyboard. An iPad doesn't have that. Uh, there is no limitation on how many key presses it can do. Also, um, for an iPad or JPEG, you don't need any drivers. It's the it's a UHID, Universal Human uh, in Input Device. Uh, it will it will load some basic drivers from your um, a kernel or or, or in in install CD and whatever, and it'll work. PS2 keyboard, keyboard has no limitation on the number of key press. Well, PS2 is old. Yes. <laughs> so you don't you don't feel bad scrapping it out and soldering <laughs> things. Yeah. Inside. Well, you can you can do that, but then still that does not take away the monstrosity of the keyboard. Yes. But you have the complete cabinet to hide it inside, no? <laughs> <laughs> People uh, like you call like me all the time. People, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, I value your opinion, but I respectfully disagree with it. <laughs> All right, other questions? Okay, I think then that uh, sums it up. I hope not less last year that people just walked up to me after the seminar because they're shy to talk on the microphone on the interweb. So, okay, well, um, well, we have the questions, which was the last slide, so thank you.